We did a social experiment where we gave everybody in America $10,000. One year later, who would have more money? Who would have less money? Who'd be absolutely filthy rich with this $10,000? And who would have nothing to show for? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to line your own pockets versus somebody else by discussing financial literacy starting in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Zapali here, healing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite topics. We talk about this all the time, which is financial literacy. Recently in the news, Allen Iverson, former NBA player, great, 76, has been in the news again. And if you don't know his financial history, he made $200 million as a professional NBA player. And today he's got nothing to show for, spent down all his money. I believe the, the stats are he ran out of money in two, three, four, five years after making $200 million. Some ruins by Allen Iverson. He come from a game, he went to an airport, couldn't find his car, he said, screw it, I'm just gonna go to the dealership and buy another car. Some frivolous conversation about money and how he spent money. And he filed bankruptcy because he couldn't pay a jeweler in his hometown $900,000 because he still owed him money. Instead, he filed bankruptcy. But his saving grace, what was his saving grace? He signed a contract with Reebok. And with Reebok, they said, you know, we're gonna pay you all this money, but we're gonna lock up some of this money. We're gonna establish a trust fund for you. So we kind of know how you are with money to your own benefit. Because right now he's living, I don't know, paycheck to paycheck or, 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 or charity check to charity check, but he's going to have by the time 2030 comes around, an unlocking of a $32 million trust fund on behalf of Reebok. So good move, Reebok, to making sure you have a back of a professional basketball player who wasn't historically or reputation-wise good with finances. By the way, here's some other celebrities that screwed it all up too as well, either went broke or filed bankruptcy. Johnny Depp, Mike Tyson, Michael Vick, Kurt Schilling, 50 Cent, Nicolas Cage, Wesley Snipes, Floyd Mayweather, Mark Twain, even Donald Trump. And what does Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, Prince, and James Brown all have in common? All four of these folks, celebrities, all died without life insurance. So let's talk about financial literacy. What is financial literacy? Well, financial literacy is knowing the skills and behaviors to make informed decisions. Let me break that down even further. It's how to earn, how to spend, how to invest, how to save, how to budget, and how to borrow. 57% of adults are financially literate. Think about this real quick. Imagine a life where you don't know how to read and write. Forget about money. Imagine you don't know how to read and write. How do you get around in this world? How do you text message? How do you read GPS? How do you read an email? How do you apply for a job? How do you do your job if you get a job? Imagine being illiterate. One time Mark Twain said, once you get literate, guess what you gotta do with that literacy? You gotta continue to grow that literacy because he said one man that is literate versus another man that's illiterate. What's the difference between the one that's literate and that's illiterate if they don't read, write, or grow? The difference is nothing. Man or woman that knows how to read and write who doesn't grow or doesn't read or write, they have no more of an advantage than a person that's illiterate if they don't read, write, and continue to grow and develop. So our job is not only to be literate, and in this case, financially literate, so therefore we can understand the words and the agreements in the conversations that come away that may confuse a lot of people and to work through all the emotions to make a logical and informed and prudent decision to make sure you grow your money and you protect your money. Furthermore, the US ranks 14th in the world in financial literacy. Think about this. America is the greatest nation in the world. Let me repeat that one more time for those who don't believe it. The United States of America is the greatest country in the world. My family's from the Philippines and the shooting of this video. In the studio, I have a person from Pakistan. I have a person here that's from Frisco, Texas. We have a geographer who's from Sierra Leone in Western Africa. And we have somebody here who's from Cambodia. All multicultural, and guess what makes America great? That in fact, we can bring these cultures and ethnic backgrounds together. And in America, we can have our American dream come true. But by the way, I just wanna let you guys know, these four guys don't work for me. They're independent contractors, they're business owners, they're working for themselves, making their names great because they're understanding financial and entrepreneurial literacy. That's for another video. 33% of adults worldwide are financially literate. So folks, we have a job to do. We have a job to do, make sure people understand how to operate in this world. And one of the most important things in our life is money. You say money is right up there with oxygen, you'd be right. Money, food, 
sex, relationships, these are faith. These are all important things that make sure our life grows in prosperity, that we're happy, that we're continuing to pass it on to the next generation. These are all very important things to do when you are now financially literate. So many people today feel financially insecure. By the way, how do you feel about your finances? Are you feeling secure? Are you feeling insecure? Let's break this down. Despite working full-time, 35% of American families still can't afford rent, food, transportation, medical care, and minimum household expenses. These last 12 weeks, I've been at a national gotcha book tour to launch my book, Gotcha, and how to help people avoid the five gotchas of money. And every city I go to, I do a quick budget from the Economic Policy Institute of what it takes to live in that city and state. For example, I went to Orlando, I went to Chicago, I went to Memphis, been to the DMV in the Dallas, Washington, D.C. area, Dallas, Miami, went to all these different cities and states. Atlanta, I've done a geographical search of what it takes to live in those cities and states, although many vary. But guess what? Many people in those cities and states that I've toured and asked and interacted with, a lot of them feel financially tight. So this is that data that I'm sharing with you. I'm talking about real practical conversation that I individual am having with the people that we're coaching and mentoring in the communities that we're serving. 18% of adults claim to just get by financially. 55% of Americans don't think their retirement savings are on track. Ask yourself this question. If I'm not saving for my financial future right now, I've not been investing myself, I'm not investing in a retirement plan, do I plan on working forever? How many of you guys are excited for working forever to the day you walk? I bet you not one person watching the video right now is very excited about that thought. Let me ask you another question. How many are excited about finding a plan in a formula so therefore you can retire sooner than later, that you can compress time frames? What somebody took 40 years to make traditionally at a job, clocking in, clocking out, or at their business, just being driven and run by their business. Imagine finding a financial formula where you can compress what you normally make in 40 years down into five or 10 or even 15 years. Well, that's financial literacy. See, you may not know about my story, but I have a 2.2 GPA in high school and I don't have a college degree. My family immigrated here from the Philippines in the 70s. And make a long story short, I had zero aspirations of doing anything academically. I had nothing I wanted to do with the classroom. I blew off school. I was a horrible student. So what did I do? Instead of getting to school and getting accepted in colleges, I decided to enlist into the military. I enlisted into the Marines. I served eight years on active duty, combat veteran, two years in the reserves, and then I got out. Then I got out without pretty terms either. I got out, I filed bankruptcy when I was in the military. I got married and divorced while I was in the military. I became a single father with custody of my three kids after the military. I was in horrible financial shape. I was financially insecure, but you made me want to be secure was really understand money. So for me, I had to learn the hard way. I don't know about you, maybe you need to learn the hard way. Some of you will tap into wisdom, meaning that you're gonna tap into the knowledge and the experience of people that have been there, done that, so therefore you can avoid wasting unnecessary time and money to get you to where you wanna go. Why? Because that's not only being financially secure about your lack thereof, but also being financially secure and confident in yourself, saying, you know what, I may not know all the answers. I need coaching, I need mastermind and mentoring, I need somebody to help me get to the next level along the way. 73% of Americans rank finances as their primary stressor. Ask yourself this question, the last five decisions you made, the last 10 decisions you made, how many of those decisions you've made lately and recently have been somewhat related to money? How about your kids? Mommy, daddy, I wanna do this. You say, no, we don't got no money for that. Mommy, daddy, I wanna eat this. Sorry, it's too expensive. Mommy, daddy, I wanna go to this class trip. Sorry, we ain't got no money for that either. How many times are you going to say no to the people that you love and care about? You see your parents struggling financially in their latter years, maybe in their retirement years. They don't know how to ask you, but they need financial help. Why? Because as you get older, people think that what? You need less money when you're retired? Ah, uh -uh, that's a myth. You actually need more money when you retire. 29% of Americans stress about money daily. So ask yourself this question and put it in the comment section below. Drop, I've had enough in the comments if that's you. I've had enough about my financial situation. I've had enough about going paycheck to paycheck. I've had enough about not understanding money and money running me. Instead of me running my career or running my business, my career or business are running me. I'm having to say yes to a lot of things I'd probably say no to if I had my finances in order. The more you have less savings, the more you have to say yes to everything else. Why? Because a man or woman that doesn't have savings, a man or woman that does live a life of paycheck to paycheck, you have to say yes to a lot of things. Yes, boss, yes, boss, yes, boss. Because if you say no, they fire you, let you go. You're back to square one financially speaking. How are you gonna feed the family? How are you gonna put the roof over your head? 
How are you going to do the things that you really want to do as a citizen, as a father, as a mother, as a grandparent, as a student going through school? How are you going to do the things if you're constantly saying yes to debt and no to financial freedom? By the way, the older you get, the, what I realized, you got to understand, too, I don't walk on water. I learned this through the hard way. The more I understood about money, the more I felt comfort and freedom, not in the word yes. I felt more comfort and freedom in the word no. If you think you're on your own and you're going through your financial situation all by yourself, you feel isolated and you feel confused, you're not alone. 2023 National Report Card and State Efforts to Improve Financial Literacy gave only seven states an A. Only seven states require some form of financial literacy course before graduating high school. Think about this. This great state in the United States of America, only seven states require those to have grad to be graduating high school, some form of personal finance and financial literacy course before graduating. According to the TIA Institute Geflect Personal Finance Index, adults answered only 48% of 23 questions. That's it, 23 questions correctly in 2023. That's a decrease from 50% to 2017. So what do you think? Do you think Americans are getting smarter with money as time goes by? Or not smarter as time goes by? When we're flooded with cash, what do we do with it? We buy stuff. By the way, guess this nation in the world leads in consumerism, leads in spending, leads in luxury goods buying. Guess which country? The United States of America. We lead the world in buying luxury goods. And which demographic leads America in buying luxury goods? The black and Latino community. So ask yourself this question, what type of rules, what type of environment have you been raised with money? How have you been thinking about money? How have you been internalizing money? How have you been trying to process finances and, and how to go about this world with your money? What have your parents been telling you about finances? Well, it's leading what? To a decrease in financial literacy. The average person loses 1,800 bucks annually. Think about losing 150 bucks a month just because you don't know about personal finance due to lack of personal finance knowledge. Only 8% of Americans say their financial situation today is excellent, only 8%. Women are 10% less likely to answer financial questions correctly than men. 60% of women and 53% of men worry about their financial future. I've been doing financial literacy for a while. I've been doing financial literacy workshops with the Federal Reserve Bank in Chicago, back when I was in Chicago, and now I'm in Dallas. But I've been doing free financial liter literacy classes for a minute. And I remember speaking to the Treasury Secretary of the United States at that time. Her name was Anna Escobedo Cabral. Matter of fact, if you have cash right now, look in your pocket, you probably have her signature on your cash. She signed all the cash, all the official notes of tender of our cash in circulation today. It's probably got her signature on it. She said, Matt, in 2010, 60% of the control of finances, control of money, shifted into control of women. Interesting stat. So guess what, ladies? Many of you are graduating college today more than men. Many of you are taking government positions today. Many of you are running for-profit, non-profit corporations today. Many of you who are running the household, your husband traditionally makes money, and most, not everybody, but generally speaking, most men run the finance of the house in terms of earning money, but they depend on their wives solely to run the management of their finances. So ladies, if you haven't gotten a financial literacy course or a class or an awareness of it, we need more ladies today understanding money because sadly it's going in other areas outside of your bank accounts and your investments. What a Gen Z, what about my TikTok generation out there? Gen Z is more likely to ask family members for financial advice than financial advisors. And by the way, financial advisors are professionally trained in their, in their industry, in their stocks, bonds, mutual funds, in their area of specialty to help people with finances. If you go to the bank, you go to Merrill Lynch, you go to Bank of America, you go to the Chase uh, Private Wealth Department, you go to many of these banks and financial institutions. Sadly, they require you to have $250,000 of minimum account balance before they have a financial advisory conversation with you. But Gen Z is more likely than to ask for financial advice from other people or their favorite source, TikTok or social media. 54% of teens worry about financing their futures, especially is college a scam? Is it worth to go to college? Many of the teens today are worrying whether or not that's a prudent decision. 69% of teens say that increasing post high school education costs change their mind about school. Listen, I have three older kids. I have a 28 year old son who made me a grandfather. Yes, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grandfather of a six month old uh, uh, baby uh, granddaughter. Ruben made me a grandfather. Ruben made me a dad. He's my oldest son. I have twin girls that are 23. None of them went to college. Why? Because they assessed the cost of college before graduating high school. I said, Papi, we don't uh, want to be a doctor. We don't want to be an engineer. We don't want to be somebody that requires a college degree to accelerate the next level of life. Bobby, we just want to be like you. We want to be an entrepreneur. We want to do our own thing. 
And guess what they're doing today? They got their own jobs, they got their own careers, but zero student loan debt. Think about how much freer and more aware they are now about finances when all their friends are coming back out of college now, struggling to find a job just like they are sometimes. But now they have the additional pressure of having student loan debt. Think about what type of financial future you would like for yourself and for your children if the cost of college continues to be higher and higher and higher. So what's the cost of us being financially illiterate? 60% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. 58% of Americans don't have an emergency fund. Think about this real quick. 58% of Americans reported that if they had a $1,000 emergency, they don't know where the cash is coming from. The cash is coming from what? Credit card cash advances. Borrowing money from their 401k, which they shouldn't be doing because that's for retirement. Borrowing from friends and family. Asking for a title loan from a local Title Max or a local loan shark, legal loan shark apparently with 300% interest to lend them some money in case they really have a $1,000 emergency. 87% of Americans are worried about the cost of housing. Many people today find it cheaper to rent than to actually own. That's a problem. 70% of households are surprised when they overdraft their checking accounts. Listen, I was the guy that I had these little envelopes from the bank every week. Why? Because I was financially Ill illiterate. And I realized that every, those, every time I slide my credit card and they overdraft my account, they charge me 35 bucks. Even though a lot of those overdraft fees are minimized today, it's still a problem if you're overdrafting your card. Because think about this real quick. In your cell phone right now, check, take a look at your cell phone. How many apps in your cell phone do you have for other people to get your money? Think about that real quick. How many apps do you have on? Count them. Cash App, Zelle, these different uh, department stores, Amazon, eBay. How many apps do you have on your phone to conveniently have you spend your money? And how do you track that? Flip that question. How many apps on your phone do you have that bring you money? And what would you rather prefer? More apps or more functionality to bring you money versus apps to help you spend money. That's also a part of financial literacy. And if you don't understand that really quick, you can be financially illiterate and less financially confident. 66% of Americans worry they don't have enough money for retirement. Guess what happens if they don't have enough money for retirement? They're gonna have to work until the day they die. Let me think about this real quick. Go to your local Walmart. Go to your local gas station. Go to your local grocery store. Sadly, how many more senior citizens, those 65 and above, are actually working at a grocery store at a Walmart, at a gas station, not because they necessarily want to, because they have to. Observe and do an audit in your own family. How many of your older uncles and aunts and grandma and grandpa, how many are they still working because they're still financially behind? And do you want to be in that financial position? These are some tough questions you got to ask right now. So therefore, if you're clear about your financial future, you make the right decisions today, so therefore those can compound in the right direction, so therefore you can be more financially secure and literate 10, 20, 30 years down the road. America has $1.08 trillion in credit card debt. America as a whole has over a trillion dollars in credit card debt and charging you how much? 17%, 20%, 30%. And if your credit is not good, guess how much that percentage goes? It's higher and higher and higher. Again, who is your money working for then? In credit card balance, if you're not paying off your balance at the end of every 30 days, who is your money working harder for? You or the banks? If we are in credit card debt, and by the way, America is not an example for credit card debt or borrowing either. America today is paying over a trillion dollars right now in debt. That's more money than the U.S. government spends right now on the military. How's that for priorities? To owe other people versus taking care of ourselves? Think about how bad an example the federal government is about finances. Don't follow the government as an example for your financial future. Here's an interesting breakdown. Ask yourself this question. How I'm dealing with money today? Is it because I learned it from somebody and, and from a formal aspect or did I just pick up attitudes and behaviors from everybody around me? Let's take a look at this breakdown. Percent with high financial knowledge, okay, of the differences in financial lives between race and ethnicity. The worst ethnic race to learn about money with financial literacy is a black and brown community. 14% financial knowledge, 23% financial knowledge. And here's the crazy part. This demogra these demographics right here make a lot of money. This is a great economy. This is where LVHM, you know, Louis Vuitton, Hennessy Moe, that company, those guys are making a lot of money selling their products and services like Louis Vuitton, like Hennessy, like Moe, to which community? This community. This is what I have a problem with. A lot of people are getting wealthy off our communities, just not ourselves. My job as an entrepreneur, my responsibility as an entrepreneur, the number one responsibility as an entrepreneur is to make money. Why? So therefore I can pay my staff. Better, I can pay and create more jobs. 
better I can help spread that money to the people around me. Think about where your dollar circulates, where you buy gas, where you go eat, where you buy groceries, where your daycare is at, where you go shopping. Think about where your money circulates. Does it help your community? I've become conscious of that uh, uh, the last 10, 15 years of my life. If I'm going to make money, I want other people around me that are associated with me that have earned my business, I want them also to make money. You know, we're doing a cigar event next Thursday. It's called Cigars, Wealth, and Whiskey. My job is to bring entrepreneurs together that we have a passion for good whiskey and cigars and entrepreneurship and finance. And my job is to make sure that if I'm gonna do business with people here locally in Dallas, I get to know them through my Cigars, Wealth, and Whiskey event. So therefore, I get to know the local videographer, I get to know the local uh, 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 gas station, or I can get to know the local restaurant tour that down the road I can use them for events, I can eat at, I get to know the local diners, I get to know everybody in my community because I want people that I know to make money. Because if I'm going to spend money, I want to direct my finance to those that benefit the most. And I love funding and financing small business owners. It's my job. And hopefully you can consider that line of thing too as well, that if you become a blessing, if you get blessed, that you become a blessing to other people around you. The white Caucasian ethnic demographic, 36% financial knowledge. But guess which ethnic background has more financial knowledge than everybody on the board? The Asian AAPI, the Asian American Pacific Islander Community. Odd, huh? Ask yourself this question. How often do you think these family members in these ethnic demographics have a casual and educational conversation and proactive conversation about money? Are they educating themselves about money or are they continually arguing with each other about money? And how are we raised? What's the culture about it? So is money necessarily just logic or is it culture? Is it socioeconomic impact and how we are raised with money? That's what I'm saying. If you want to improve your finances, you most likely have to unlearn a lot of things that you understand today about money. We say it a lot too in, 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 the, in the faith world, in the faith-based community. Don't have the pastor read your Bible for you. If you read the Bible, you call yourself a Christian, guess what you gotta do? Read the Bible yourself. Don't depend on the PowerPoint of the church to read your scriptures for you. Don't depend on the pastor or the pulpit on Sundays reading the scripture for you. I, just like with finances and your faith, I hope that you continue to educate yourself on a daily basis to improve these areas of your life. Don't have that outsourced but you do it yourselves. If you do so, I promise you, you'll be much more financially, in this case, faith-based wise, ahead than you were a year ago, five years ago, et cetera, et cetera. And let's think about generation. Which generation do you think is more financially literate with money? And by the way, based on the stats, based on this graph, it's not that overwhelmingly different either. Look at, look at our Gen Z, a TikTok generation, tw those mostly in their 20s. 10% have some form of financial education literacy but 22 to 28 uh, correct on this financial literacy exam, only 10% got it right. 16% got it right in Gen Y. 17% got it in Gen X, my generation. Baby boomers, 18%. Look at sa the silent generation, what I consider the greatest generation, the World War I and World War II generation. 17% answered 22 to 28%, 20 to 28 answers correct on this financial literacy exam. So this continues to become a big problem. And back here, some data here on the gender, some interesting information here. 53% of all men was answering properly on a personal financial index, financial literacy questionnaire. 43% of women answered properly the right answers on a financial literacy questionnaire. And here's a shocking thing too as well. What's the functional knowledge, the day-to-day -day of borrowing, saving money? Think about what's the most important aspect of your life. Put it in the comment section. What do you think the most important aspect is in your financial life as it relates to personal finance and financial literacy. Is it borrowing? How to make sure you get the right credit card, the right student loan, or the right car loan, the right mortgage? Is it saving? Is it making sure that your, whatever you put away for retirement is 5% or 1% or 10% or 20%? Where to put it? What about consuming? Do you want to be in a position where you're over-purchasing or over-buying things because you're not financially educated on what the actual cost is for that product or service? What about earning? By the way, this, in my opinion, is the most important area of financial literacy earning income. Why? If you control your money, you control your earning power, guess what? You have the highest amount of confidence and more so, I would say this too as well, entrepreneurship in the right type of capitalism has raised many more people from poverty, from being paycheck to paycheck, for not having enough, to being financially literate, to being financially successful, and being financially confident more than any other economic system in the history of the world. I am a benefactor of this country having an economic system called capitalism to allow a kid like me who immigrated, whose, whose family immigrated from the Philippines to start with nothing, to have no money, to be broke, to be in bankruptcy, 
to give me a position to say, hey, I could be a future millionaire one day. And guess what has happened over and over? And just not to me, but the people around me. We're helping more people make 100,000 a year. We're helping more people make 500,000. We're making more people make a seven figure income. That's a whole theme and message and inspiration behind my YouTube channel. Because I want more of you making seven figures. Like, don't think that me becoming a millionaire is a big deal. Many more people are making millions and millions of dollars a year. Matter of fact, in my office, if you make a million dollars, you're not the number one guy in my office. You might be number two, you might be number three guy, but just because you make a million dollars doesn't necessarily mean in my office here in Dallas, you're the number one guy. Why? Because we have more people making millions of dollars per capita than any other country in the world. What about go-to info sources, investing, insuring? Here's another area too as well that affects a lot of people. They spend a lot of money on things, but they don't insure themselves. And then worse times and worse situations happen. Now they're looking for cash. Think about this real quick. When is a death unplanned? It's always unplanned. Oh, there was an unplanned death. Or another area that causes a lot of bankruptcies in America. The number one reason why people file bankruptcy in America is not credit cards. The number one reason why people file bankruptcy in America is a change in health. How many family members have you had that have suffered a stroke, cancer, heart attack, complications with diabetes, can't take care of themselves, and they charge up debt, 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 or they spend down their savings, they spend down their 401k just to pay for those things. Now they're dependent upon you. Well, that's what insurance does. It keeps you from spending that money. For example, in my book, Gotcha, I profiled my favorite client for the last 21 years, going on 22 years. She got retired in 20, uh, 2010. She hasn't lost a dime in the stock market since 2003. Since then, she's been taking money out of her retirement account without paying a dime in tax, legally and ethically, just like the rich people do, even though she isn't rich or wealthy. She's now in a retirement community, not a retirement home, big difference. She's in a retirement community where every day she got a workout buddy. Every day she's got activities. Every day they have some form of a fun activity of painting or, or, or understanding nature or understanding things that they didn't have time for in their working years. Every day they got an activity. She goes, oh my gosh, she shows me a schedule. It's like a cruise ship, everything. She doesn't have to cook. She doesn't have to clean. If there's need for medical care, they're right there. It's four to $6,000 a month to stay there in, in, in most areas. And guess what? She doesn't have to drain of her retirement account to pay that. Why? Because she had the right insurance. And who am I talking about in my, favorite, in my book about my favorite client? Who am I talking about? My mother. Why? I decided to become financially literate because not only did I want to take care of myself and my children, I want to take care of the person that's nearest, most nearest and dearest to me, which is my mom. And since then, my mom hasn't had any concern. Why? Because once I got literate, it takes one person. I promise you this. It takes one person, a family's last name, a family's generation, to change the bloodline forever. Will it be you? If that's you, put your last name in the comment section below. If, that's you, if you're the person in your family that's going to change the financial trajectory of your bloodline forever because you make a decisive decision right now to do so, please, let's keep some receipts. Put your name in the comment section below. So if you continue to pull the financial wool over your eyes and you don't get financial literate, it's going to cost you. By the way, I'm just a messenger, okay? Hopefully you focus on the message, not me. Maybe once in a while we need the, the tough conversation to be had. And that's the problem with America today. A lot of people in America today don't want to have these tough conversations. Well, if you're watching this video and you're, up, you're watching it up at this level, I applaud you because how does it affect you? 50% of adults lost over $10,000 last year due to lack of financial literacy. 30% of adults lost at least $500 last year due to lack of financial literacy. 53% of Americans don't have an emergency fund. If you, op if you continue operating these ways, you're further and further and further behind. And by the way, I haven't even talked about inflation yet. So many people tend to be affected by inflation. How has the gas tank been to you? How has the grocery store been to you? How's the normal things you buy? People here in Dallas, they're fighting higher and higher and higher in terms of cost of living. Mortgages, rent, cost of living is going up in many different cities, metropolitan communities. So if you continue to be financially illiterate, again, you're gonna fall further and further behind. It's up to you right now to stop that trend. Let me ask you a question. Who benefits? Who benefits from, from Americans being financially illiterate? Think about the three biggest things we all buy for most people in our lives. What's the biggest thing, the biggest purchase that everybody buys in their entire life? You know it. House. What's the second biggest thing that most people buy in their entire life? A car. What's the third biggest purchase that people make in their entire life? They choose to follow their path. Their education, their student loans. And by the way, these three things, house, car, education. How many people do you know, including yourself, buy these three things cash? Very little, right? How many people then, these three things that they buy, do they finance it? Do they owe the people? So again, who benefits from us being financial literate? Who benefits from you being a borrower? In the book of Proverbs, if you're not trying to put any religion down anybody's throat, but if you ever crack open the Bible, 
And you go into Proverbs. And why Proverbs? Proverbs is written by the richest and wisest king who ever lived. His name is King Solomon. For those of you that might know a little bit about the Bible, it was the uh, uh, son of David. David was the, the character in the Bible that slayed the big giant. He had a son. His name is Solomon. Solomon took over his father David's position as king of Israel. And when he took over as a king of Israel, you know what he realized? I need not more armies. I don't need more money. I don't need more countries, no more land, more territories. Guess what he asked God for in a dream? Because God was having a conversation with his dream. Solomon asked in his early years, in his late teens and early 20s, in that dream, he asked God, don't give me that. What I need from you, God, is wisdom. Wisdom. Today, that's what a lot of people are lacking. People got lack of access to information, but they don't have wisdom. Where do you think more people go for information? TikTok, social media, YouTube, right? Where do people get education? Colleges, certification programs, trade schools. That's where they get education. But where do people get wisdom? Ask yourself this question. Where do I get wisdom? Meaning, people that have knowledge and experience and the results I would like to have in my life. Where do people get access to that? Very, very far and few between of many areas or communities or organizations that provide that benefit. So who, who benefits? You know what I thought about? I thought the government benefits. I thought the banks benefit. What am I missing? You let me know. Who do you think else benefits from us not being financially literate? Because ask yourself this question. Back to Proverbs. King Solomon said this. The borrower is servant to the lender. Again, the borrower is servant to the lender. In other words, if you owe somebody money, and you see them, guess what you have to do every time you see them? What do you think about? You think about your friendship? You think about your relationship? No, you think about owing them money. Ask yourself this other question. When's the last time you lent money to somebody and it didn't pay you back? When's the last time you lent 20 bucks to somebody, 100 bucks to somebody, 1,000 bucks to somebody, 10,000 bucks to somebody, any sum of money? When's the last time you loaned money to somebody and they didn't pay you back? How did you feel? How did they feel? How was that relationship? Did money divide you? Or did money bring you together? The cost of lack of financial literacy is dividing people more and more. And by the way, we just saw this movie last night called Civil War. And guess what America doesn't benefit from? Being a divided America. Guess what America benefits from? Being a United States of America. That all the stuff that we're all about, we focus more on our similarities versus focusing in on our differences. That's what makes America the country it is today. That's what makes America great. It's continuing to make America greater in the future. But who benefits from us being broke? Please put in the comment section below. So what can you do now? How do you get ahead of the financial game? You got number one, you got to set a clear vision and a goal. If you don't sit down, slow down, and think and meditate upon your financial condition, your financial situation, and you let the busyness of life and the busyness of life just keep chopping you down and distracting you for the, keeping the main thing, the main thing, which is financial happiness and prosperity and be a great blessing to other people, if you don't sit down and slow down and think, your life is just going to be the same. And by the way, you might need somebody to help you sit down, slow down, and think. But you got to be clear. Think about this, Shukra. I've, I've mentioned this in my Gotcha book term many, many times at the beginning of my book, Gotcha. Think about how often you use your GPS. How many times people ask you to go here, you want to go somewhere, and you use your GPS? How often do that, how important that device is, that, G, that app is on your phone? Imagine living your life right now without GPS. You know what a Gen X had to do back in the day? We had to go to this website called MapQuest. Plug in our address, print it all out, or old school, we just write down directions. Make a right here in this street, make a left here in this street, go four blocks down in this street, then you get to the address. Today, what do we have the convenience of? GPS. What does GPS do? They give you three different directions on how to get from your address to where you want to go. And what's usually the address? First way, the local route. What's the slower route? The second route, using highways, public highways. A much faster route. Third, the fastest route is route that what? that allows you to take the tolls. And what gets you there faster? The tolls. And guess what? What's the revelation to that? If you're willing to pay the price, it's stop being cheap in your life. If you're willing to pay the price, you get to where you want to go faster. Many of you were brought up to say, you know, I got to keep, or, I need my own old change, or I need to clean my own house, or I need to serve, conserve, conserve, conserve. I could, it's cheaper for me to do it myself. No, you need to think about how to create jobs. You need to think about how to understand money and the mindset and attitude and character of money so therefore, you can elevate your financial situation by investing yourself from an educational standpoint. Therefore, you can invest in others and they can benefit from your elevation. Which leads me to number two. Money is a mindset. Money is an attitude. Money is an outlook. How you think things is how you see things. 
and how you see things is how you do things. For example, so let's take a piece of wood. Three different people look at this piece of wood. How does an animal look at the piece of wood? Let's say a gopher. You know, a gopher looks like a piece of wood? That's food. That's for a way for me to, to, to consume. How does a caveman look at a piece of, piece of wood? It's fire. All right, I can light up the world. How does Archimedes look at a piece of wood? Man, I can make a bunch of levers. I can build a house. I can leverage this to greater things. How do you look at money as it relates to your life? So my encouragement to you is write down the stereotypes of your culture. Write down the things that you're taught about money that just may not be true. That subconsciously you're programmed in this language called brokenese. That everything you think about is broke, broke, broke. I want to have you consider installing a new language called millionese, richinese, right? Financial freedom type of language. Third thing, find people who are good with money. You know, when I was in the Marine Corps, Corporal McComb, by the way, Corporal McComb, if you're watching this, bro, I would love to reconnect. But we all are the same rank. We're corporals, we're E4, we're all in the same rank. Well, how can Corporal McComb, at the every, end of every paycheck, at the end of every month, every two months, he had more money than us. And he had kids, and he had a wife. How come he had more money than us, and we're all broke? Well, because he was good with money. So find people right now on your list, right down the list. Who are three, four, five people that are good with money? Interview them, have lunch with them, you buy lunch with them, Say, I want to know what you do right now to be good with money. A good friend of mine who I'm seeing this weekend here in, in Hollywood, Florida. His name is Kehini Thomas. He was walking to a drag cleaner, pick up his stuff before he goes to the next appointment. He gets stopped by this young man. He says, sir, can I interview you real quick? I see you pull up in a Bentley. Can I interview you real quick? Well, this gentleman runs a YouTube channel and an Instagram page called School of Hard Knocks. And what this young man does, he just asks rich and successful people questions how to get to where they're at from coming from where they come from. And this video went viral. 80 million views, translated to multiple countries in different languages. And he's from Nigeria. Why? Because it is outlook of money, and he's good with money. And now he's sharing his knowledge with everybody else. Write down, right now, take a ledger, take a notebook, forget an app. Stop distracting yourself with having to get software. Go to Walgreens, go to CVS, get yourself a notebook. That's what I did in the military. Open up the notebook, write down what your paycheck was. Every two weeks, or every commission check, write down what you earned. And then on the other side, write down what you are spending it on. Here's a problem sometimes with Apple Pay. Here's a problem sometimes with credit cards. You don't physically feel it or see it. I'm an OG. Back in the day, we used to carry cash. Guess what we felt as we spent our money? Our pockets getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. We're like, yo, dog, I need to make more money and stop spending my money. Today, that's not the problem. People are like, wah, wah, wah. They're just like spending cash. And they're going to realize, oh my gosh, I just spent 1000 bucks. I just spent 2000 bucks. Again, who benefits from us doing that? Next thing, hold yourself accountable to somebody richer and be willing and able to say, ask me the tough questions. Be tough with me. In the area of finance, there's no area of finance outside of your faith. Do we need more, a sad word here, discipline? But guess what benefits from discipline? You. You're going to not like the work, but I promise you, you're going to like the benefits. Last but not least, read, watch, listen to personal finance topics. I'm one of them, Okay. Take advantage of all the free information that's out there. And by the way, just consume. Just consume the content. If you're going to consume something, consume content. Learn. Stop la listening to the last hip-hop artist or last celebrity out there doing their thing. Cut all that off for a season of your life. Turn your car into a money university. If you listen to podcasts, you listen to financial topics, you're starting to understand this new language because now you're enriched with a new level of awareness. When you're enriched with a new level of awareness, now you can have new options for you to take to take action. We're enriched with this awareness. But if you're not aware, then you don't know what actions to take, you know what behaviors to follow. We're just financially lost. But if you watch, listen, and put these things in your ear. For example, when I was coming up in business, Les Brown, Les Brown, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, right? These are financial topics. So Robert Kiyosaki, these guys I would listen to over and over and over. And I'd start adopting their language. I'd start adopting their outlook. Who are you listening to in the car? Who are you listening to in your idle time? What are you watching in your idle time? Are these things helping you financially get ahead? Maybe for a season of your life, you need to put everything else on pause and say, you know what? 2024, 2025, whatever year you're watching this video in, whatever timestamp you're watching this data. By the way, if you're watching this right now, whether now or in the future, put a timestamp. Let's keep receipts. Put a timestamp of the year that you're watching this video and come back to this video. Save this video. And come back a year from now, or five years from now, or ten years from now, how much financially ahead are you from watching this video? With that being said, guys, I appreciate you watching this content. 
If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to a YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad. A YouTube channel is dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Side note, if you guys want to buy some merch, sevenfigurequad.com with links here at the bottom to raise your consciousness and awareness as it relates to money. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.